the invisible cut. It's a technique used in movies for over a century. It's when you stitch two shots together in a way that's virtually undetectable. For example, the movie 1917 is a bunch of different takes stitched together in a seamless way. Or this epic hallway fight scene from Guardians of the Galaxy 3. Or almost any Zack King video. It's a powerful tool in the belt of any VFX creator. In fact, it's a technique I use all the time in my own videos. Today I'm going to teach you how to do your very own invisible cuts with nothing but After Effects and a little bit of Photoshop. But first, I'm going to show you how to do this with your phone and CapCut in two minutes. Starting now. Now while it's nice having film equipment, you can do this with the stuff you have at home. Oh, it's Theo. Thanks, dude. Official copy. You see we have the phone on a tripod, but if you don't have a tripod, literally anything you can prop your phone up on will work. As long as the phone is not moving, the cut will be easy. For this video, I'll be blowing up different balloons. Obviously, I don't want to take... Oh, let me put this down actually for a second. It does take quite a bit of time to fill it up all the way. So in this video, there's going to be a cut when I blow up the balloon to the full balloon. It's a lot longer than I expected. I think I overfilled these. We'll try again. We will have to use orange. That'll be our inflated one. There you go. So these will be right out of frame, right here for me to grab later. All right, here we go. So the video will start with a little. Action. Cut, we're gonna do it again. And cut, that's it. All right, now to the edit. Now it's time to open cap cut. First, we select our clip and trim it down. We are gonna cut in the middle of the first action where I pretend to model the balloon and then make a cut in the middle of the second action with the balloon animal and delete everything in between. We are now gonna do this exact same step for the moment I return the balloon to its original form. Now we set this to 4K30 and export. And just like that, we're done. So as I'm watching this, I'm noticing some issues where my head's in a different position in these two shots. And then right here, my hands don't exactly line up with the balloon. But considering I did this in a few minutes on my phone, I think it's pretty good. Which reminds me, these are three rules I always follow when I'm doing invisible cuts. Rule number one, when possible, cut on motion. If you're cutting on motion, it's way easier to hide the imperfections if a subject is in motion between shot A and shot B. If you're on a static pose and you're trying to cut from one moment to another, it's more apparent where the differences are. Your eyes are more trained to your exact position. They're familiar where your head is, your knees are, or whatever. Number two, obscure your variables. That might be your face, your facial expressions. If your fingers are not moving, that might be your fingers. If you're wearing a jacket, it might be easier if it's zipped up than open. If you can obscure those variables on the cut, you're gonna save yourself a lot of headache in post-production. And rule number three is consistency. As far as the environment, this might be the sun's position and subsequently the position of shadows. If it's a windy day, anything affected by the wind, a busy background like a highway, whatever can change from shot A to shot B, limit that as much as possible. That may mean waiting to shoot until it's cloudy outside or shooting inside altogether. As far as the camera's concerned, that's locking things down like the exposure, the shutter speed, the white balance, anything that could change from the first shot to the second. And in the case of this video, locking the camera itself down on a tripod. Anyway, on to the next shot. Next, we have to... I went too far forward. Ugh. So you're gonna... Wait a minute. This isn't right. Ugh. It's a sponsored segment. Hey, it's NordVPN. It's the fastest VPN on the market. And that's official. Well, AB Test ran NordVPN against his competitors and found it was the best by a considerable margin. Their global network of 6,400 servers in a total of 111 countries makes all of this possible. All you do is choose your server location and Nord finds the right VPN for you. And if you're still having issues, Experience Customer Care offers 24 seven support. Additionally, Nord VPN protects you from malware, web trackers, and other internet threats by encrypting your online data. You can use it to protect multiple devices, even when you're offline. Nord VPN is currently offering an extra four months when you sign up for their two year plan. If any of that sounds good to you, check out the link in my bio, as it not only helps my channel, but also helps keep you protected online. And thanks again, NordVPN, for sponsoring this video. Whoa! Ugh.
Let's get started. We are going to shoot a video where I'm mopping the office floors and I all of a sudden find myself mopping in a pond. I am sorry in advance if you do so. Who's gonna spread? I'll slip. I think this sells it though. <laughs> this sells it. Alright, so let me grab a towel. For the first part of the video, we're going to shoot wide enough that we can see the whole scene and push in tight enough so it's just the painting of the pond. Cool. Now that we have the shot we want, we're going to use some saran wrap so we can match the two shots. Yeah, we're over there. That's cool. Saran wrap is on. We're going to the pond. So here we are at location two. This is the pond we're going to use. That's actually really nice out here. I'm a method actor, so these boots are staying on. Alright, let's get that frame in. Let's just go for it. For the second part of this video, we're going to do the exact opposite camera motion, starting nice and tight and pulling wide. Nice. These boots filled with so much water. That is disgusting. That's so good. All right, that's it for this location. Now we're heading back to the studio. Okay, now it's time to jump into the edit. Just kidding, first the coffee. <laughs> First, we need to open After Effects. Then, we're going to drag in our two clips that are going to be seamlessly blended. Next, we're going to place them in the same comp. Now, we're going to line them up as best as we can to find the moment where they are as close as possible. At this stage, I'm limiting myself to just the transform controls. Position, rotation, scale. And after initial review, I decided I'm going to use that left arm with the mop as my natural wipe between the two shots. But, as you can see, the wipe transition alone is not going to cut it. My arms are not aligned the same. My body's twisted a bit differently, and I don't actually pull them off to the same spot in both clips. And this is where nailing that performance in camera really matters. The worse the performance or the framing is in camera, the more real-time problem solving comes into play, which is more fun that way. First, I'm gonna mask out the top arm from the second shot, as this is gonna be what's initiating that transition to happen. Make sure you switch on motion blur, as it'll give the mask a more natural edge. Now I'm going to rotoscope out the same arm from the first video. I'm going to roto out the hand and the sleeve separately though, so I can digitally pull the sleeve up. Now let's quickly bounce back to that top arm from the second shot and use Puppet Warp tool on it. Something I do often is I go to the frame where the most distortion will be and I start there. I'll add the points as needed and adjust the layer till it aligns as closely as possible. Then I go to the frame where I want the arm to realign with the second clip and click reset. This will set the arm back in the original position. Here is without sleeve B, with sleeve B. Moving right along, we're gonna animate the opacity of the second arm over a few frames. We'll then find a nice middle frame and begin a similar process with our arm from the first clip. I will parent the hand to the sleeve and then reposition the arm to align with the second one. Boom! And then the hand, oh this is the fun part. Once aligned, we're going to animate the hand into the sleeve. Ta-da! Look at that. Look at that beauty. Let's now puppet warp the hand to match the latter hand. Coffee break. Then reset the transform and the puppet tool on frame one. Next, I'm going to duplicate the second clip and add a mask, and this will animate the second clip in underneath that top arm. Okay, now we have a problem that's super apparent. The original arm from the second shot is clearly visible underneath our animated arm. First of all, Everybody stay calm! What's the procedure, everyone? Calm. Secondly, we're gonna have to travel to the future frame, where that arm is no longer an issue. Now we're gonna freeze it right there. Boom. Problem solved. I'm just kidding. Now it just looks like there's an image underneath that top arm. Why? Well, first of all, the brightness and the lighting conditions between the two clips are very different. More importantly than that though, my torso is rotating in the one shot, but it's stagnant in the other. So we're gonna need to fix that by masking back the bottom part of the torso from the first shot, where I'll keyframe the mask to reveal more of the latter layer over time. Now I'm gonna use the puppet warp tool on the image of my torso and that back arm to match the movement from the first video. With that locked in, the next problem to address is the movement of the shots. The first shot stays locked in on my position, but that ladder start, you'll see that it starts to back away from me. So I'm gonna need to isolate and keyframe my head and that shoulder from the first video to animate it smaller over time to match the movement of the second video. And with all those body parts aligned, I'll add a keyframed color change with Lumetri to darken the first video over time to match that second clip. This is going to apply to the torso, the head, and that arm. I'm almost done matching these two takes, but I'm noticing a few frames where my hand from the first video intersects with my head before the top arm can cover it. So I'm gonna freeze that layer with my head cut out before that happens and animate that layer for one frame until my arm wipes over it. And that's Hollywood, baby. Now these two takes of me are aligned and I am done. Time to post it on social media. Wait, hey, wait a minute. Hey, 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 hmm? Yes? That, that doesn't, doesn't look, look right. right. Oh yeah, that's because we only completed the first half of the effect. The other half is filling our green canvas with our final background until the final background takes over the whole image. Oh. Okay, thanks for clearing that up. No worries. First, I'm gonna pre-comp everything done up to this point. Why? 
why not? Why are you messing with me? But for real, the reason is that I'm gonna be doing some rotoscope later, and I'm going to apply that to the one layer rather than a bunch of different layers. And Anyway, so I need a planar tracker, and obviously Mocha Pro is the way to go. But if you do not need all the extra bells and whistles, you can get away with Mocha AE for this video. Which, coincidentally, is built into After Effects. First, we'll be adding a layer to track. And pro tip, when making a tracking layer for a big object with a very limited amount of detail, you're going to be better off by making an initial shape for one detail, and then adding additional shapes to the same layer, which you can do right here, for the other areas with detail as well, rather than just creating a giant shape for the whole area. Also, make sure to add a layer to mask out your subject to make it the top layer if it obstructs any part of your track. You're gonna have to animate this over time. Now this mask is gonna be disregarded when you're tracking the shot. With that in mind, set the layer to track perspective and go ahead and let it rip. Here's a time lapse of that track. You may need to stop every once in a while for some manual adjustments. Also, you're gonna notice that that track layer goes so out of frame, I'm gonna need to limit my tracking to just scale and position. I was running into some issues with the track where I decided to split this into two tracks at this point. One for the first part of the video, one for the latter. But after some workshopping, it's done. Next, I'm gonna go ahead and roto myself out from the first video. I'm gonna use Roto Brush 3 for this, and I'm gonna click Freeze, and wait, and wait, and wait. Wait. Once the freeze is done though, don't think about it again. It's so it's done. It's frozen. It's done. Now for the moment you've been waiting for, we're gonna fill the canvas with our second video to complete this effect. First, I'll need to find that frame I want the picture to come to life moving forward. I went ahead and rendered that out of After Effects as a JPEG and brought it over to Photoshop. Now I'm gonna use generative fill to expand the frame, but also paint myself out. Honestly, this part of the process would have taken five times as long if it was two years ago, so points to Photoshop. With this new clean plate, I'm gonna bring it into After Effects and I'm gonna line it up with the frame where the second video takes over. I'll add two null layers, one for the first mocha track and another for the second, and we'll apply the respective tracks to each one. Now we track that image backwards until the moment that that first track takes over. This is the one with the perspective. I'm gonna apply this directly to the image and then continue to go backwards. You'll notice pretty quickly that the image is smaller than the canvas. So we're gonna go back to Photoshop and expand this digital painting. And for good measure, let's go ahead and add a picture frame now too. That way it kind of reads a little bit more like, hey, this is just a picture and nothing else. Because I didn't use the exact frame that the second video takes over at, I did have to use a little bit of a cross dissolve and some puppet warping to align the layer with the video. Plus I used an additional mask for the real world coming back into the frame under my top arm. Now there were two windows lighting the shot on the left side, so I'm gonna add two instances of shadows to help sell this comp on the right side. To do this, I'm gonna duplicate my roto and then add a fast blur, plus a fill set to black, and then I'll adjust the opacity and align it until it looks just right. Finally, I'll animate the opacity and the blur over time until it's gone and undetectable. Okay, and that's it. And for everybody interested, I just put out the full breakdown on my Patreon now. Go check it out. Ugh. Thank you everybody for watching the editing process. And without further ado, the video is live now if you wanna go ahead and check it out. <laughs> what are you still doing here? The video is live, go check it out. Or subscribe, or both. <laughs> okay, for everybody who's stuck around, Star Wars prequels or sequels? Comment below. <laughs>